convergence of deep seek now putting pressure on the U.S. tech names. It's, it's super impressive. I think we should take the development out of China very, very seriously. Deep seek just taught us that the answer is less than people thought. You don't need as much cash as we once thought. Can you imagine how annoying it is to see you build your house for $50 million and a guy next door <laughs> builds the same house for $700,000? That's got to be frustrating. It should what? be a wake-up call for our industries that we need to be laser-focused. That necessity is the mother of invention. In December 2024, a small Chinese startup shocked the AI world with a breakthrough that would challenge tech giants and redefine AI. DeepSeek, a relatively unknown player, quietly made waves with their V3 model. Trained on just 2,000 low-end NVIDIA H800 GPUs, it outperformed many top models in coding, logical reasoning, and mathematics. This achievement sent shockwaves through Silicon Valley, prompting industry leaders to reevaluate their approach to AI development. Behind this feat was Liang Wenfeng, a mysterious figure whose background would soon captivate the tech world. Liang Wenfeng was born in 1985 in Zhanjiang, a coastal city in China's Guangdong province. Raised in a modest household by his father, a primary school teacher, Liang showed an early talent for mathematics. While other kids played games or sports, he spent hours solving puzzles and equations, finding joy in untangling their secrets. This love for numbers would shape his entire career. By his teenage years, Liang's problem-solving skills stood out. He had a knack for breaking complicated challenges into smaller, manageable steps, a skill that later helped him tackle real-world tech and finance problems. At 17, his dedication earned him a spot at Zhejiang University, one of China's top schools. There, he studied electronic information engineering, blending his math skills with hands-on technology applications. During college, Liang dove into subjects like data analysis and computer systems. He became fascinated by how math could explain financial markets, studying tools like probability-based models and algorithms to predict trends. His professors noticed his talent, giving him advanced projects and research opportunities. By his final year, he focused on algorithmic trading, using computer programs to make fast, math-driven stock market decisions. This work later became the foundation for his career. Around this time, Liang faced a major choice. Wang Tao, founder of the drone company DJI, invited him to join as a partner. Though the offer promised wealth, Liang turned it down. He believed AI would transform industries far beyond drones. Instead of joining DJI, he chose to start his own company, aiming to pioneer AI-driven solutions. The signs were everywhere, but now it's official we are in a recession. The research group that makes that determination made it today and said the recession actually started a year ago. When the 2008 financial crisis rocked global markets, Liang Wenfeng, then a graduate student at Zhejiang University, saw a chance to put his skills to the test. As banks collapsed and economies wobbled, most people panicked. But Liang, armed with his math expertise, focused on solving the chaos. He gathered a team of classmates to explore machine learning, a type of AI that learns from data. Their goal, to build computer programs that could analyze markets faster and smarter than humans. This approach, called quantitative trading, relied on math models to spot patterns in stock prices, economic reports, and global trends. The team started by collecting mountains of data, stock prices, unemployment rates, even news headlines. They fed this information into experimental algorithms, tweaking them to predict market swings during the crisis. It wasn't easy. Early models failed constantly, especially as the economy kept shifting. What if we adjust for investor panic? Liang suggested during late night coding sessions. His team persisted refining their programs to account for unpredictable human behavior. Slowly, their algorithms began identifying hidden trends, like how falling housing prices affected tech stocks that traditional traders missed. Months of trial and error paid off. While their system wasn't perfect, it started making accurate predictions in the volatile market. For example, it flagged when certain stocks were about to rebound, giving the team small but meaningful wins. These successes drew attention at Zhejiang University, where professors saw Liang's work as proof that AI could reshape finance. By 2009, 
Wall Street and other financial hubs were embracing quantitative trading, just as Liang had anticipated. His project became a case study in innovation during crisis, a blend of math, technology, and sheer persistence. Though he'd turned down a job at DGI years earlier, this work cemented his belief that AI wasn't just the future of finance, but of nearly every industry. In 2013, Liang Wenfeng took his first step into professional trading by co-founding Hangzhou Jacobi Investment Management with his college friend Xu Jin. Here, Liang tested his AI-driven trading strategies in real markets, learning how to adapt algorithms to unpredictable conditions. Two years later, the pair launched Hangzhou High Flyer Technology, focusing on blending advanced math and AI to create smarter trading systems. Their timing was perfect. China's financial markets were expanding, offering new opportunities for tech-driven firms like theirs. High Flyer made waves in 2016 by releasing its first AI trading model. Unlike traditional methods, this system used deep learning, a type of AI that improves by analyzing vast amounts of data to decide when to buy or sell stocks. The results were impressive. During a volatile market period in early 2017, High Flyer's AI trading system maintained consistent profits while competing firms experienced losses. Growth exploded. By late 2016, High Flyer managed over 1 billion yuan, about $140 million, outpacing older rivals. A key moment came in 2015 when the company launched 10 investment products in a single day, supercharging its ability to raise funds. Liang's focus on constant innovation kept their algorithm sharp, blending new AI breakthroughs with real-time market data. By 2019, High Flyer ranked among China's big four quantitative trading firms. This success proved that homegrown companies could compete globally using cutting-edge tech. For Liang, it was just the beginning, a stepping stone toward his larger vision of AI transforming industries far beyond finance. As High Flyer grew, Liang Wenfeng faced a critical challenge. The company needed massive computing power to keep its AI trading systems ahead of the competition. In 2019, he bet big, spending 200 million yuan, about $28 million, to build Firefly No. 1, a supercharged AI training system. Equipped with 1,100 specialized graphics cards, Firefly No. 1 could crunch financial data at lightning speed, helping High Flyer's AI make smarter, faster trades. But Liang didn't stop there. In 2021, he doubled down with Firefly No. 2, investing a jaw-dropping 1 billion yuan, $140 million. This upgrade packed 10,000 of NVIDIA's top-tier A100 GPUs, a move that shocked the industry. To put its power in perspective, Firefly No. 2 could handle as many calculations as 100,000 high-end laptops working together. Few companies in China, let alone a trading firm, had ever built something this advanced. Firefly No. 2 wasn't just powerful, it was efficient. It slashed energy use by 40% and costs by half compared to older systems. How? Smarter cooling methods, energy-saving designs, and custom parts that sped up data flow between GPUs. These tweaks let High Flyer train bigger AI models without burning through cash or electricity. Though built for stock market predictions, the Firefly system soon became key to High Flyer's bigger ambitions. Liang saw their potential to tackle AI challenges far beyond finance, from healthcare to climate modeling. In May 2023, Liang Wenfeng took his biggest risk yet, pivoting from finance to pursue general artificial intelligence, AGI, AI that can outperform humans at most tasks, from writing code to diagnosing diseases. While most AI tools focus on narrow jobs, like chatbots or image generators, AGI aims to think and adapt like a human. By July 2023, Liang launched DeepSeek, a startup with a bold mission, create human-level AI. This put him in direct competition with China's tech giants, all racing to dominate AI. But Liang had a plan. Instead of chasing quick profits, he bet on young talent. 
hiring fresh graduates from top universities. Raw smarts beat experience here. DeepSeek focused on their work instead of seeking media attention. The team avoided publicity to focus on long-term research. But being small had perks. We're like a speedboat, one engineer said. Big companies are oil tankers, powerful but slow to turn. DeepSeek had two advantages. Firefly supercomputers from Liang's finance days, providing massive computing power for training AI. Open source ideals, sharing tools to collaborate with researchers worldwide. In May 2024, DeepSeek dropped a bombshell. DeepSeek V2, an AI model that matched giants like GPT-4 Turbo, but cost 170th the price, just one yuan per million words processed. This wasn't just cheaper, it reshaped the rules of AI. Here's how it worked. DeepSeek V2 combined two breakthroughs. The new multi-head latent attention helped to process information much faster while using less computing power. This was an important achievement since it let the model perform well without needing as many resources, something AI researchers had been trying to accomplish for a long time. DeepSeek saves money by using a method called mixture of experts. When someone asks a question, the system figures out which expert model is best suited to answer it and only turns on that specific part. For example, if you ask about finance, only the finance expert is activated while other parts stay off. This smart approach helps DeepSeek run much more cheaply than if it had to use the whole system for every question. Companies quickly lowered their prices, making small businesses and startups very happy. Finally, they could afford AI tools once reserved for tech giants. Analysts called it democratization of AI, breaking the myth that advanced tech needed billionaire budgets. DeepSeek's achievement was particularly notable, given the company's relatively small size compared to tech giants. The success of V2 demonstrated that innovation and clever engineering could level the playing field, allowing smaller teams to compete effectively with well-funded competitors. The model's low energy use addressed a growing concern, AI's environmental cost. By needing fewer computers to run, DeepSeek V2 showed how to make AI more environmentally friendly, which matters because data centers around the world use more electricity than entire countries. This breakthrough had potential applications in edge computing, mobile devices, and other scenarios where processing power and energy consumption were limiting factors. DeepSeek prepared to unveil a groundbreaking AI project. On December 26, 2024, they launched DeepSeek V3, a model that marked a major step forward in AI technology. What made this achievement special was that it was done using basic hardware. DeepSeek V3 was built using just 2048 NVIDIA H800 GPUs, which many consider basic equipment in AI development. This was very different from big Silicon Valley companies, which usually use hundreds of thousands of more powerful GPUs. Despite using simpler equipment, DeepSeek V3 performed better than models trained on much stronger hardware, showing excellent skills in coding, logical thinking, and math. The model worked as well as OpenAI's GPT-4, which was seen as the best AI system available. Andrej Karpathy, who helped start OpenAI, praised how well DeepSeek V3 worked with limited resources. DeepSeek's method was also much cheaper. Training DeepSeek V3 cost about 558 million yuan, while GPT-4's training cost between 63 and 100 million dollars. This showed that you don't always need more computing power and money to make better AI. DeepSeek's V3's success came from smart new approaches, like FP8 mixed precision training and predicting multiple words at once. These methods helped DeepSeek use less computing power while maintaining quality. The training took less than 2.8 million GPU hours, while Llama 3 needed 30.8 million GPU hours. To understand how efficient DeepSeek V3's training was, Think of it like a Formula One race car that beats other cars while using a smaller engine and less fuel. This success got many AI experts talking. They realized that clever methods and efficient programs could help smaller companies compete with big tech companies. By showing that top quality AI could be made with limited resources, DeepSeek changed how people think about AI development. This breakthrough created new opportunities for researchers and organizations working with smaller budgets or limited access to advanced computing equipment. At DeepSeek, success came not just from advanced technology, but from their unique approach to building their team. 
while their AI breakthroughs amazed the industry, the way they ran their company was just as innovative. Their achievements weren't only about complex programs and powerful computers, they were about the people making these ideas real. DeepSeek stood out for its small, young team. They had just 139 engineers and researchers, much smaller than their competitor OpenAI, which had about 1,200 researchers. This small size surprised many people in an industry that usually believed bigger teams were better. Liang Wenfeng had an unusual way of building his team. He looked for bright young talent, especially recent graduates or people with just a year or two of work experience. He often hired from top schools like Tsinghua University and Peking University. Choosing young potential over experience was risky, but it led to great innovation. The company was set up to encourage new ideas. DeepSeek had very few management levels, which helped make decisions quickly and let team members take charge of their work. Liang said the company worked from the bottom up, letting people naturally find their roles and grow in their own way without too much control from above. This simple structure made a big difference in how people worked. Young researchers felt free to suggest and try new ideas. Without many layers of management, new concepts could quickly go from idea to reality, without getting stuck in paperwork and procedures. This change in competition made many big companies rethink their plans and how they used their money. Scale AI's founder, Alexander Wang, shared his honest thoughts about it. He said DeepSeek's success was a tough wake-up call for American tech companies. While the US had become too comfortable, China had been making progress with cheaper and faster methods. Wang's words showed how the global AI field was changing and reminded big companies they needed to stay alert and keep improving. Mark Anderson, a prominent investor, called DeepSeek R1 one of the most amazing breakthroughs he had ever witnessed. He was especially impressed that it was open source and could transform the AI industry. Anderson's comments showed how DeepSeek's new approach could change not just the technology, but also how AI companies do business. The AI community began wondering how DeepSeek's achievement might shake up the market and challenge big companies like OpenAI and Meta. We Chinese we just need to understand the truth and the truth.